Hello, you are watching News Mongolia on MNB World. I am Jugdur Lambold. And uh, for our top stories, new cooperative Walter Herder program presented to Cabinet. Czech professor Antonin Kuzera was named an honorary professor by the University of Life Sciences. High controls offer relief for urban hypertension. For the news, stay tuned. Minister of Mongolia and head of the Cabinet Secretariat, Amar Basulang Dashtigwe presented the new cooperative Walter Herdu program to the Cabinet, aimed at improving the social security and well being of Herdu's. Created in line with Mongolia's development goals, the program focuses on supporting nomadic and semi nomadic livestock husbandry through cooperative based production to address climate change challenges and boost herders' income. The program anticipates several positive outcomes, including an improved supply system that will reduce seasonal price fluctuations for livestock products. This stability is expected to provide herders with a more reliable income, enhancing their social security. The program also aims to enhance the livestock sector's resilience to climate change and improve risk management practices. The program will promote sustainable livestock production practices aligned with green criteria and position Mongolia as a leader in environmentally conscious livestock management. The new cooperative Wealthy Herder program seeks to address immediate economic concerns and contribute to the long-term well-being and sustainability of Mongolia's herding communities. In recognition of his pioneering contributions to scientific research and academia, Czech professor Antonin Kuzera has been awarded the title of Honorary Professor of the Mongolian University of Life Sciences. Known for his dedication to advancing knowledge and innovation, Professor Kuzera has made significant contributions to establishing a new research and study laboratory. Having dedicated nearly three decades of his career to the Czech University of Life Sciences in Prague, Kuchera's impact on scientific exploration and education is profound. Since joining the institution in 1996, his relentless pursuit of excellence has elevated the university's reputation as a hub for cutting-edge research and scholarly achievement. Primarily affiliated with the Faculty of Business and Economics at the Czech University of Life Sciences Prague, Professor Kuchera's multidisciplinary approach has bridged the gap between business studies and scientific inquiry. His collaborative efforts have fostered an environment where diverse perspectives converge to tackle society's complex challenges. Young people are driving force of a country's development. We have furnished the research and study laboratory with new computers and modern equipment. And within the frame of EU's agriculture policy, I had the chance to give a lecture on Czech Republic's position on agriculture. <laughs> Mongolia is an agricultural country. Agricultural researchers and students are crucial for our country's development. Multilateral collaboration in research and study, as well as introducing foreign technological advancement to the sector, is very important. Kuchera's vision for the scientific laboratory at the Mongolian University of Life Sciences embodies his commitment to fostering innovation and discovery. Through strategic investment in state-of-the-art equipment and infrastructure, he has created a dynamic research environment that empowers students and faculty to push the boundaries of knowledge. The honorary professor title bestowed upon Kuchera is a testament to his unwavering dedication and exceptional contributions to promoting cooperation between the educational institutions of Mongolia and Czechia. In the heart of bustling urban landscapes, where stress levels soar and fast-paced lifestyles take their toll, a silent epidemic looms large hypertension. But just outside of the concrete jungle, a natural remedy waits on high controls that promise solace and relief from the pressures of urban life. 
Meet Bat Sehun's family. For two years, this family has spent every Saturday hiking near Ulaanbaatar at Bogdol with an elevation of 2,261 meters. Thanks to their healthy habits, they have lost 10 kilograms and lowered their blood pressure. Thanks to hiking once a week, instead of burning 240 calories a day, we burn around 1,000 calories. It's had a good impact on our metabolism. I no longer have any health problems related to high blood pressure. Usually, I wake up at around 5 or 6 in the morning. My husband has also developed this habit. I never imagined hiking could have such a profound impact on my health. But as I began to explore the trails, I noticed a significant improvement in my blood pressure and overall physical well-being. Usually I had very high systolic pressure, around 160. Now thanks to hiking and constant physical activity, it stays at around 130. Hypertension, often dubbed the silent killer, affects millions worldwide, with urban populations particularly susceptible due to the sedentary lifestyles and high-stress environments. Recent studies have shed light on simple yet powerful solutions, spending time in nature and physical activity. I'm happy that people are adopting healthy lifestyle and habits, such as jogging and hiking. I think there is no need to be hospitalized if you have slightly moderate blood pressure issues. Instead, I would advise following a doctor's advice and going hiking in the fresh air. Physical activity can help prevent further complications such as strokes and myocardial infarction. Walking just one kilometer regularly can significantly reduce the risk of hypertension by up to 15 percent, making it a simple but effective way to maintain cardiovascular health. Committing to a weekly walk with family not only fosters bonding and quality time together, but also sets a positive example for children promoting a healthy lifestyle from an early age. But Sehan's experience is not unique. Research has shown that spending time in natural environments such as hiking trails can have a measurable effect on hypertension. The American Heart Association recommends walking as part of a comprehensive approach to preventing and managing hypertension. According to their guidelines, adults should aim for at least 150 minutes of moderately intense aerobic activity per week, such as brisk walking, to improve their cardiovascular health and reduce the risk of hypertension. The combination of physical activity, fresh air, and scenic surroundings works to lower blood pressure, reduce stress levels, and improve cardiovascular health. Now please uh, take a look at currency exchange rates uh, provided by the Mongol Bank. Now, please have foreign news partnered with international news agencies. The Israeli military on Sunday released a video. It says showed strikes against Hezbollah weapons, manufacturing sites and military compounds in Lebanon. It said on Sunday that, in response to the launch that were fired toward northern Israel overnight, it fighter jets struck a significant Hezbollah weapons manufacturing site in the area of Nabichit, deep inside Lebanon. Lebanon's militant Hezbollah group said it fired dozens of rockets toward Israeli military posts in Syria. Israeli occupied Golan Heights early on Sunday after an Israeli airstrike killed one person in Lebanon. The group said the attack with Katyusha rockets on several military posts was in retaliation for Israeli airstrikes overnight on towns and villages in southern Lebanon that killed and wounded civilians. The early Sunday exchange came as Iran launched hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles toward Israel in an unprecedented revenge mission for the April 1st Israeli airstrike on the Iranian consulate in the Syrian capital of Damascus. An Israeli military spokesman said the launches numbered more than 300, but 99% of them were intercepted. 
UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak criticized Iran on Sunday for their dangerous and unnecessary escalation over its drone attack on Israel. Israel praised the success of its defenses in the face of an unprecedented attack by Iran involving hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. An Israeli military spokesman said Sunday the launches numbered more than 300, but 99 percent of them were intercepted. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said Iran fired 170 drones, more than 30 cruise missiles, and more than 120 ballistic missiles. Several ballistic missiles reached Israeli territory, causing minor damage to an air base. Well, last night, Iran launched a barrage of missiles and attack drones across the Middle East towards Israel. This was a dangerous and unnecessary escalation, which I've condemned in the strongest terms. Thanks to an international coordinated effort, which the United Kingdom participated in, almost all of these missiles were intercepted, saving lives not just in Israel, but in neighboring countries like Jordan as well. The RAF sent additional planes to the region as part of our existing operations to counter Daesh in Iraq and Syria. I can confirm that our planes did shoot down a number of Iranian attack drones. I don't want to pay tribute to the bravery and professionalism of our pilots flying into the face of danger to protect civilians. Sunak said that the UK participated in an international coordinated effort which intercepted almost all of the missiles. He added that additional Royal Air Force jets had been sent to the Middle East to bolster Britain's existing operation against the Islamic State group in Iraq and Syria. A former Middle East advisor to the U.S. Department of Defense has said the recent conflict between Israel and Iran is a miscalculation which could set the whole region on fire. Jasmine El Gamal was a Middle East advisor at the U.S. Department of Defense and speaking to Sky News said that Iran's overnight drone attacks on Israel were a clear sign it was wanting to send a message. Um, the you know the real issue is that basically for the past five months now, in large part mostly because of the war in Gaza, there have been escalations on the part of many different actors in the Middle East. And so the most important thing to do right now is to de-escalate tensions and try not to make things go even further than they already have. This is just the latest in a series of back and forth, tit for tat uh, 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 responses and, and counter responses by actors in the region. I mean, it's important to note here that this Iranian attack against Israel was in direct retaliation to Israel assassinating an Iranian commander and attacking an Iranian consulate in Syria. Iranian proxies have been attacking both Israeli and U.S. In, uh, interests and personnel in the region in response to Israeli operations in Gaza, which, of course, were a, re a result uh, and, and a counterattack to October 7th. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of these moves and counter moves in the region. Of course, the dangerous part here is uh, is not just these planned moves, but the risk of a miscalculation that could set the whole region on fire, which is why it's so incredibly important now to turn down the temperature, step back a bit, take stock of the situation, and most importantly, figure out a political pathway forward to end the conflict in Gaza, to address Iranian activities in the region, and to address Israel's role in the region as well. The political pathway here is the key. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a good day.